Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe. Welcome to the Soybean School down in London, Ontario today at the BASF Research Farm. Catching up with agronomist Ken Kurakin. How's it going? It's going fantastic, Bernard. Another beautiful September day. I know. This is a, it's kind of like springtime. And I, I bring that up because I want to talk about residual control, residual mm. herbicide, and where it fits. Um, we had a pretty dry spring this year. Yep. And, um, you know, people had a lot of questions about residuals. Um, let's talk about how they did this season. Yeah, so interesting spring, right? Because bone dry through May for the most part. Uh, you know, a little shot of rain to activate some of the residuals on corn middle of May, but that was mm. kind of here nor there. Second pass and a lot of corn cleaned that up. Uh, the legume crops, the soybeans and the dry beans were the real challenging one as that dry weather persisted into June. And uh, a lot of growers backed off of residuals. And I think if we can sum everything up this year with that experience, you know, once the water tap turned on and raining and raining and raining, you know, we see a lot of soybean fields and dry bean fields that broke late in August uh, in terms of weed control. I think it's really important for growers and agronomists to understand, you know, there's still a reliance on residual herbicides if you want to talk about the goal of season-long weed control for your field. And if we also look at, you know, other than the aspect of season-long weed control, you know, we're seeing, you know, multiple resistant water hemp, multiple herbicide-resistant common ragweed. Now, we look at managing weed resistance, you know, those residuals are pretty key in terms of utilizing the remaining effective modes of action on those, on those weeds. Now, Ken, you mentioned the importance of season-long control. Um, what role does layering play here? Yeah, so when we talk about layering residuals, we've seen, we've seen some, you know, uh, a couple different things happen in the last, you know, five, six years in terms of herbicide and, and tools that we have on the farm. First of all, you know, uh, soybean herbicide-tolerant traits, right? Whether it's dicamba or 2,4-D, you know, an opportunity to use different modes of action that may have a small residual component to them, by and large, their contact, which is one more way to get into the field with a different mode of action other than glyphosate. But the key thing is, is when you're in there with those products, there's also uh, an opportunity, for instance, we have uh, the opportunity to lay down some some pretty strong residual products in crop, and I'm going to talk about soybeans in particular with this one, right, with a couple of the group 15 actives in the marketplace, pyroxysulfone and metolachlor, zidua and dual, uh, that you can lay down post in soybeans, which is a new use pattern. But strong residual products, you know, we still have the pursuits of the world, the classics, things like that. We have an opportunity to, you know, to manage our soybean crop from a weed control standpoint with a residual program up front and some residuals in crop, and that's really, really important. How important is rates here? And from a perspective of, of knowing you're active and how much you need? Yeah, we spend a lot of time educating growers and agronomists on this because, you know, we have a lot of co-packs and premixes in the marketplace now, Burn, And, uh, you know, in the herbicide world, everything old is new again. We're still using a lot of old chemistries, but we're using them in co-packs and premixes. It's really important to understand that a lot of these residual chemistries, whether they're, you know, the group twos, like the pursuits and, and classics, etc., cetera, um, you know, a group five like atrazine and corn, right? The group 15s that we use in corn and soybeans, you know, and there are others, uh, you know, another trizine, metribuzin, right? Using a lot of soybeans, the Sencor line of products. It's really important to know that those labels have that rate range on there by by crop or seed size of the crop in the case of pursuit and edible beans, uh, or or you know in the group 15s for example the the rate by organic mm -hmm. matter maximums that you're allowed because group 15 binds to organic matter. So it's really important to understand those rate structures that are on the labels and understand the residual world that more is better, right? There is good value there in terms of your herbicide investment, but always read and follow the label. And obviously, you know if you're on lighter soil less organic matter, you're restricted on rate. Some of the larger seeded crops, you're restricted on rate on some of the group twos. So that's important. Um, but it's also, you know, take that a little bit further, going back to those co-mixes and uh, co-packs and pre-mixes. You really have to understand with those co-pack and pre-mix products, what are you actually getting in terms of grams active ingredient at the label rate and what's in the box? So how is that formulation actually composed? What are you getting? And most of those products will, you know, quite often will have a rate range on them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to drill that down, work with your certified crop advisor and understand the grams active you're getting because that will help you determine what your value is on your dollar invested as well. And then determining, okay, what's the fit for my soils? What's right. the right 
right rate. What are the gap weeds where if my rate's a little bit light on something, uh, am I going to see a gap there later in the season? And then take it another step further, further working with your crop advisor, your, you know, your, your agronomist, and figuring out, okay, now when do these residuals actually go down? In a two-pass program, one of those passes, probably the first is going to have residuals. But as I mentioned earlier, with the two-pass program now, there's an opportunity to, to use some of these residual products in ways we weren't able to 10 years ago. Mm. Final question for you, that is, you know, why don't we learn, shall we say, in, two tw in 2023 about residuals? That we, we, we can take forward this winter as we're planning for 2024. So I think, Bern, you know, it's a great question looking forward to next year. You know, to me, the key learning, to go back to our opening point, is we cannot talk about the goal of season-long weed control without utilizing some strong residual chemistries and complementary residual chemistries in your program. And perhaps in a, you know, in a two-pass or a layered residual program type, type approach. That's really key because if you look back at, you know, the fields that only got contact herbicides this year, whether it was the sprayers being behind, whether it was just two dry and didn't want to invest that 40 or $50 an acre in a strong conventional soybean residual program up front, pre-emerge. At the end of the day, there was nothing to hold that crop together, right? right? We even see it in the herbicide tolerant soybeans where there was just no grass residual herbicide there. And some of those fields, the grass is the grasses kept flushing with the rains, having to clean them up with glyphosate. So, you know, that goal of season-long weed control, um, you know, your pathway is to use the residual herbicides in combination and look at the best program to put that all together. And I think it's really, you know, looking ahead at 2024, working with your CCA, you need to understand the presence of herbicide-tolerant mm -hmm. weeds in your area too. Yeah. And it's not just flea bane, it's, it's the multiple mode of action yeah. resistant uh, weeds like water hemp, like now common ragweed. Understand what those threats are because they're very expensive threats if left unmanaged. Yeah. So those are really my two key points yeah. looking ahead at next year. Yeah, for sure. Getting more chemistry in there. Ken, always great to have you on the Soybean School. Appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Bern.